my real opinion is at the professional level, yes, of course the leagues get to make their own decision. And sometimes, yes, trans women have an advantage and the league is allowed to say, no, we're, we're not going to allow it. Shut the f up. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my mind. And defend our position for like three minutes on air, right? And then another round of nukes, right? We're better than the Young Turks. We're the most pure. We're the most progressive. Radical, radical, radical. We have to be the most radical. And if you don't believe us, then you're a Nazi. Well, and then I made it an issue. Who here in the chat knows or watches Hassan? Definitely a fan now. Like he's got some fantastic takes. Not all of them. Some things are things I don't agree with. Hassan, an ally. And I'm gonna say it, hot take, hot take here. Jenk of the Young Turks of TYT is also an ally. We'll get into his problematic take. The bar is higher, okay? The expectations of him are higher, but at the end of the day, he is a good one, okay? Anyway. One is uh, the progressive movement, honestly, and this is where you and I can begin to disagree, um, getting too radical and too away from what uh, most Americans want. And the second iceberg... What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so look, uh, we saying things like... Uh, all sports leagues, including professional ones, has to allow trans women. They don't have a choice, etc. That pulls it like two percent. You say, hey, it's a moral issue. It's really important. Do you think the it's sports leagues are like the most important thing in you, the whole you, wide world? Do you think it's actually a significant issue? Do you think that that is a significant issue or a driver of the conversation, or so, cynically weaponized by Republicans with like some liberals taking the bait and then having a conversation about it instead of being like. Nobody cares about this. Stop talking about this immediately. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what the right wing does. They weaponize every single issue. What I'm trying to get progressives to do is stop falling in the trap. So do the you, minute they say it, but do you think, our side comes out and goes, no, this is the most important issue. And you, anyone who disagrees is a Nazi. You just called 98% of the country Nazis. Okay. What are you doing? You're okay. alienating voters like crazy. Do you, okay? do you think that... Anyone guess <laughs> where I'm going to be? Hubby just brought me a coffee in, so thank you to Hubby. Of course, we're going to agree with Hassan here. And that kind of really kicks off this debate. I won't even go too much into detail of it now. We're going to obviously talk about it next. This is probably my biggest take here. I find it so ironic that Jenk is saying, oh, they, you know, they want us to fall for this debate and we shouldn't fall for it. Also, by the way, here's my opinion on it. And he completely falls for it. Do you think that organizers on the ground, both trans and cis, that are, or uh, members of labor unions, are even using this as a talking point in any meaningful capacity? Or is it simply reactionary Republicans bringing this up because they tried and unsuccessfully failed to push the anti-trans button with bathroom Except bills? Except for the fact that they pass all those bills, which I despise. No. I hate those Hold on. bills. Let me, just, let me just clarify something here. In the lead up to the 2016 election, you had the North Carolina bathroom bill that was anti-trans, right? You have to have the gender assigned at birth uh, be the yeah. bathroom that you go to. That totally failed. Okay, right. that failed. That was so objectively a failure that Donald Trump came out and said, I don't give a f or Caitlyn Jenner as long as she's in Trump Tower, right? Why does that fail? Because it is illogical when you consider the fact that the main reason they wanted that to pass, and the same thing happened in the UK, which is why I can speak about it so, so plainly. The reason they wanted that is because they are fixated on trans women and biological women. They're failing to understand that by the, the logic of that law, you would have big, burly, masculine trans men in the toilets with women. Trans men are just always erased from this conversation. It's just ridiculous. You can tell it's a bad faith argument because if it was generally a concern, then there would be a push to have a third toilet option or a safer toilet option or providing answers. But instead, it's just taking away rights. And that's how you also know this is just bad faith and it's dangerous. So what did Republican interest groups do? The family, uh, moral family, Christianity fundamentalist uh, uh, groups. What did they do? They went back to the drawing board and they looked for a reasonable sidestep that would still be anti-trans, that would open the door to anti-trans conversations that, that they could push for that was more popular. What did they find? They found that Americans love the concept that is meritocracy what is the most meritocratic process in the in the entire country uh maybe in the world sports americans love sports and americans believe that meritocracy is real and it's especially real in sports so they changed the narrative away from trans people can't pee and poo in the rooms to 
Trans people want to destroy sports. It was simply just another way to attack trans people, which is precisely why I think a lot of people correctly looked at that and went, why the f are we talking about this? This is ultimately marginal. You just want to f eliminate trans people from uh, public spaces. And I have never given an ounce uh, of, of legitimacy to that argument, despite what public polling says, because the reality is no one gives a f about it. Let me tell you something that's more important than public polling, however. No one actually cares about this in the wider scheme of things. Again, the way we can see that this is just a right wing talking point, it's just a falsified narrative on purpose, is because it eradicates trans men from even the conversation. So you brought up legislatures, state legislatures, Republicans like passing incredibly horrifyingly psychotic anti-trans bills. Yeah. Okay. And they're passing this. Yet there is no viable single issue voter out there that is like desiring these anti-trans bills. Although if you ask, uh, you know, Americans directly about like, what do you think about a 14 year old trans girl, like participating in a swim meet, they might say 56% might say that's wrong. We shouldn't do that. But the reality is there isn't any real momentum on the ground for anti-trans voters do not give a about trans people overall the overwhelming majority of voters actually have apathy for trans people they just don't care about it because they think that there's no trans people in their lives whatsoever republicans however have have kept on pushing the anti-trans button over and over again and made it their major talking point that's right that has yielded horrifyingly bad results for them and instead of like assassinating christopher rufo for example who's one of the leading guys here at the Manhattan Institute that was like doing the CRT stuff, doing the anti-trans stuff. Instead of going, dude, what are you doing? You ruined our midterm chances when Biden had a historically bad economy, when a red tsunami was supposed to happen. That was a major failure on their part. One that actually has led to Kevin McCarthy's ouster as the speaker right now, a domino effect of like the Republican party imploding in and of itself, partially because the only thing that they have been looking for the only thing that they have the only tangible policy position is just increasing the dial of transphobia but there's not enough people on the ground who are demanding it and those who are demanding it are increasingly more psychopathic which is pushing away normal republican voters who are just like i just want tax cuts man like i'm racist sure but like the f going on like i don't give a shit this like why are you talking about dismembering children's genitals all the time you sound like a psycho that's what we can see in both the uk and the us i feel like personally this is the pushback this is a a, a reaction from the right in their last moments of desperation in what we're seeing as an entire generation of much more progressively minded people being homosexual now is like much more welcomed on the west we're not finished don't get me wrong i'm not saying that it's easy it's fine that we're not done but comparatively to 30 years ago when this moral panic was being used as a tool against homosexual people and families we have come further and so like republicans conservatives the right-wing groups have just even given up that fight which is weird because you also now see gay republicans and conservatives which again let's not go into that that's a different story but you can tell that this is a, a kind of structured narrative by the fact that even within these groups you're getting a split in who is willing to just sit and, and drink in this this rhetoric and who are not prepared to kind of carry on playing the game. They're getting outrage fatigue and it has demonstrably been a failure. And that's part of the reason why you don't see Trump talking too much about wokeness or trans uh, people. He like brings it up every now and then in his commentary, but it is far less than Ron DeSantis, wouldn't you say, who is an objectively less popular candidate. Yeah. So with the exception of Trump and DeSantis thing, which we can get into, I actually agree with everything you said. So now let me give it to you from my perspective and why I'm concerned about it. So number one, Republicans bring this up because they're fishing and fishing. All their positions are deeply unpopular. So they're fishing for one position that they could finally get some sort of popularity out, right? So they dig all the way down to trans sports at the high school level, and they get over 70% saying, okay, no meritocracy, we shouldn't do that, right? So 
if at that point you and I agree, we fight back when they propose a bill and we do the best we can and we aggressively make the case that you just made and that I make all the time on the air, right? And then we don't, we're, we're okay with it. And everybody would agree. We, the country is in favor of trans rights, okay? But in the midst of these conversations, one of the things that happens is on air, I say, okay, you're asking, fine. I think at the high school level, trans uh, girls should be able to participate with biological girls because... Why do you talk about that at all beyond how... Because it comes up. Because no, no, there's no, no, a no. bill. No, no, I I'm know. fighting against the bill. It doesn't come up unless you actively want to answer it. And this is the clip that we've seen on TYT. The whole, the whole discussion of this came from when Jenk gave his real opinion of trans women in sports. He fell for it. He bit into the apple. He opened Pandora's box. He did exactly what Republicans and right-wing people wanted him to do and so it's so sad like i'm i'm agreeing i'm agreeing i'm like yes jake yes jake great i i see him as an ally don't get me wrong i do not see him as an enemy but at the last minute he falls for it what's that what do people say like everything before the word but is not true you know it's like him saying yes i agree i'm an ally i think but i agree that maybe you know trans women and biological women is, is an issue and stress what's like Oh, he was so far and yet so close. Why do you talk about it beyond it being a distraction perfectly cooked up? Because you said you agree with me. Why do you uh, talk about it beyond it being a f bill that is laughably unpopular? So unpopular that like incredible. It's not so unpopular that it didn't pass in all the red states. Wait, what? It the trans bills that passed, none of, none not about the, bathrooms, but about sports and all wait, that horse crap. But none of those bills were passed with popular support, Jank. I know they're passed by Republican legislators, and the Republican you, legislators are appeasing their base. Okay, And their well, base no, is not. maniacal, no, and their not. base wants it. No, they're not. That, that you and I, are entirely okay, incorrect. Okay, so they go you fishing are, in that area. And in that conversation, no. I say, hold on, let me finish. Okay. I say, at some point, look... My real opinion is, at the professional level, yes, of course the leagues get to make their own decision. And sometimes, yes, trans women have an advantage and the league is allowed to say, no, we're, we're not going to allow it. Well, like in chess. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like in chess, because this is what we're seeing. We're seeing that any organization that wants to just be overtly transphobic have now a, a free pass to do so. When even people on the left, allegedly progressives, running for president, we will talk about that later, are agreeing with them that like, you know, that organizations should get to make up their own mind. How far does that go? So now I can't play chess against biological women because of feminism, apparently? Really? Did I, did I read that right? So what happens next? Every single person that I know in mainstream media saw what they perceive as a progressive community then called me a Nazi. Then they go, okay, progressives are lunatics. I'm writing all of them off, right? Are you kidding me? Because somebody's had like this microscopic difference of opinion with like the most radical end of the progressive base, their right-wing pivot, Republican. It is not a microscopic difference. It is an absolutely core pivotal difference because it shows that you do not understand the fact that you are biting in to this the false narrative it eradicates all of the good you've done i'm sorry like i'm not saying he's an enemy i still see him as an ally he's done amazing things but the fact that he can't see that this is a, an important element and it's like i also think that the the discussion should be taken to a higher level this shouldn't be about one element of a specific you know genre like sports like we should be talking about the fact that Trans women and trans people exist. The conversation needs to just jump away from just trans women in the spotlight all the time. The conversation needs to take the fact into consideration that trans people exist in the world and in the community. And any form of segregation and differentiation of a minority is a gateway into long-term negative effects that rhyme with flanicide. And that like, it's like a tiny crack in a wall that he's allowing and he doesn't he thinks that's a tiny little thing and that if we if we go that far that we're gonna lose the the side of other people no bigger structures need to change sports organizations and structures need to change to facilitate people the fact that men and women don't play each other in chess anyway is a problem not adding to it by adding the trans women to the situation well okay you guys sound nuts mm -hmm. okay and don't 
do that. You think Just that, say, you think hey, that's I, what agree, it took? I disagree. So what? Mainstream, they, mainstream media literally called you a bestiality loving when you tried to run for office in California. You think they needed the uh, you, you think they needed like eleven trans people with anime avatars on Twitter it's, calling you a Nazi to be it up like on them on a, on a platter? That's crazy. And they then have there material are real issues that are they, much larger. They have material- that also cost us, and it makes it look like we are extreme. When in reality, two thirds of the country's on our side. Take the f- win. Take the win. So here's another one. And this one, I don't know how you're going to light they, up on this one. Uh, no, no, this Deep is on the police. It's this a is... terrible slogan. Okay, okay, okay. A terrible no, 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 idea. We're moving away, we're moving away from uh, other okay. talking points. Let's get, back, let's get back to the one issue that we were talking about. My perspective is that they have every interest to f- every single time mainstream media does because of their underlying material interest in defending the corporate oligopoly structure that we have. This is who funds them. Uh, This is how people rise into positions of power in the media infrastructure. You've been a part of this already. Personally, you've seen it happen to you at MSNBC. So, like, there is no reason why uh, they're they're not looking at, like, magical trans people on Twitter and going, oh, that's it. Here's the reality. They're being crazy again. They're calling Jenk a Nazi. Yes, they are. And they're looking for any excuse. I agree with that. But then stop giving them excuses, which is the point you started okay. with. Okay, <laughs> there's a there's a major disagreement here. We are at odds, and but I, we're not at odds. You say don't talk about it. I say don't talk about it. Uh, we say mm-hmm. you say you're where you're against the bill. I say I'm against the bill. You're for trans rights. I'm for trans rights. But but my point is no. That but the difference is the the same people that call you transphobic also called me transphobic all the f- time. The difference is. I don't change my perspective at the end of the day or, or even or even offer it any f- additional light because who f- cares? You just do what you think is right and you keep pushing. And I think that it's very dangerous and very scary when you get moved by uh, your base, your base of support that you have worked tirelessly for 20 years and like building and solidifying turning on you and saying you're right wing now i think that that, that is didn't happen though it, like i agree with- jig saying that didn't happen though but also he did also just claim everyone called him a nazi so i'm not quite sure what the narrative is he's trying to say but just getting on to this for a second i actually disagree with hassan here oh my god hot take oh my god not saying i agree with jenk obviously he's not really made a point yet but I disagree that, especially as a content creator and someone that has a platform, that you should just not take into consideration other information. Now, of course, there's going to be like a few comments that are just trolling. You can't read every comment. You can't, you can't know everything, like for sure. But I also don't really agree with the idea that you just never should like attempt to maintain the current knowledge and also be open to changing your view, which without context, Hassan is kind of sounding like here he's basically he's sounding a bit like someone that's saying i don't really care if i'm wrong i'm just going to carry on with how i feel and that's kind of problematic especially in context now when talking to jenk like really i think the right thing here should have been okay uncle jenk i understand that this is your opinion but let's educate ourselves let's look into this let's break down why you think that and why even to this point we have this internal transphobia and we're falling for the bait not just ignore them and move on and don't change your opinion because i think that can be problematic so our audience is just as gigantic as it's always been so you can go ahead and cry about it if you're among those 11 people uh so i'm not worried about that Haas, i gave it as a small example and i the found the police is a much larger example okay we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second are getting pigeonholed by mainstream media and, and republicans as radicals when in reality we are the overwhelming majority of the country so we need to focus and get our messaging right. That's why looking at a couple random people and, and and greatly emphasizing the impact that they have and even attributing their and even attributing the mainstream media's perspective shift on progressives when you and I both know that they never gave a sh- and they don't even need like a couple of random trans people to call you a transphobe to like uh, justify their hatred for progressives. Uh, uh, like it, okay, it, let's it, go to a larger. There's issue. no reason to talk about that because it depends. If you say you hate trans people. The answer is no in the poll for American people. They are in favor of trans rights. They are in favor of treating trans people in the same exact way about employment, 
uh, health care, etc., which is wonderful. And again, two thirds of the country is progressive. Okay, so when you go to ask them about bathrooms, no. When you ask them about the military, no. These people are willing to give their lives for this country, and you don't want them. What kind of a monster are you? So the American people are on our side on all those things. That's why they had to go digging for this stupid high school sports thing, right? And on that, I've seen the polling, and it's over seventy percent of Americans are on the side of banning them, right? Now I'm on the other side. I'm on. The, I'm with the thirty percent. I leave the kids alone, right? It's not, it doesn't matter if your daughter was going to break a record or whatever. Just calm down. Stop checking the genitals of kids. You sickos, leave them alone, right? So, but having said that, what they're trying to do, Haas, and this is the oldest trick in the book, and they did this in the back in the 1980s, is they, they dig until they find something unpopular, and they make Democrats or the left wing attack them on it. So, for example, flag burning. So flag burning, oh, everybody knows it's protected by the First Amendment. They know it's protected by the First Amendment, but they want to make it seem like we hate America and we hate the American flag and we all want to burn it. So they contrive this issue. No one's burning the American flag. Mm -hmm. It's happened like twice in the last 20 years. And you, and so, and, and then the Democrats can't help but say, well, it is a First Amendment issue. You're not, you can burn the flag. And they go, ah, ah, you on patriotic right so that's so my point is the same point you're making which is don't fall for that trap so just say hey we disagree on yeah, this move you're, on you're saying you're saying don't fall for that trap and don't even defend it or don't even i'm no, saying defend on the bills because when there's a bill you have to defend yeah but then and this is the thing he's saying don't fall for the trap while he's standing inside the trap looking up from like the dug hole and being like, yeah, don't fall for this trap. The call is coming from inside the house. The discussion happening is is already too late. When he talked about in a very positive light, again, good faith here, how trans like rights are important. People want to vote for trans rights and people want to give trans right people that, you know, the right to vote or, uh, you know, freedom, whatever. He's still talking in a sense that trans people are just this like idea of like, in society, do you know what I mean? Like, he, the way he describes it, it doesn't actually s sound audibly like trans people to him are just normal people living their lives. Because it's such a, an argument and it's a debate and because people talk about it so much, we forget that we're just people. We are just people living our lives. I'm just a married woman in Japan, like hanging out on YouTube. It It's the othering of trans people for me that is still a bit of a red flag for someone that claims to be so progressive. It's like, you're kind of also still othering us. Point out super aggressively what the Republicans are doing wrong. Chelsea, Man Chelsea Manning has a question for you. Q for Jank, is it possible that trans people are reacting the way we are because we hear people make these talking points and the next thing we know people are saying, this is why I had to become a conservative time and time again. And that, that uh, right wing slant is true for the likes of Dave Rubin and many others, even including like former TYT people. Uh, I think that's where a lot of people are defensive when they hear you when they hear you talk about this or when they when they hear people fall into the trap of like jumping on every single non issue that all ultimately turns into discourse like bonus holes or whatever the f like some psychotic weirdo British person came up with at the daily mail right uh if you are even pushing that discourse as though this is like real and and applied and 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 genuinely a threat to democracy because it's something that everyone is like forcing you at gunpoint to utilize then all of a sudden you are a culture warrior whether you admit it or not because anna again in the same vein as jenk being a progressive person being an ally whatever fine but failed at the last hurdle when she failed to understand that a birthing person as a term is used to encompass trans men, non-binary folk, and the fact that it's not just a biological woman that can have a baby. That fact of nature, if that term bothers you, then you haven't digested that fact of nature. Ergo, that makes you transphobic. If you don't believe fundamentally that a trans man is a man, regardless as to whether he has children or not, if you can't make that connection, then that's the transphobic issue. Chats just said, Anna is aware of this. That's then even worse then, isn't it? Because she should know that. She does know that. And she knows that she knows that. Oh my God, it's like knowledge inception. <laughs> so look, guys, first of all, let's just be clear on everything, okay? So number one, I fight for trans rights. I have for 21 years when no one else was. So if you don't like it and you don't believe it, that's up to you. You can do whatever the hell you want, okay? So, and I just told you all my positions, which are actually 99% identical 
to the most extreme trans right activists, right? So we have a microscopic difference. So somebody asked me about it. I say it once. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. We're and then a giant pylon starts because people want clout. They're like, oh, no, no. He's not as good as me. He's not as pure as me. He's a right winger. He's okay. a Nazi. Okay. So I'm like, I ignore it. I ignore it. I ignore it. And then they just keep going. And so I don't give a They could do whatever they want. Okay. But then don't pretend that I brought it up. No, you brought it up. And you made it a giant issue. And you're the one hurting the progressive cause and the trans rights cause. We win on every goddamn issue on trans rights. Why are you going and dying on the hill that no one agrees with you on? You're going to ruin trans rights on other issues. Okay. No, Jenk. Oh, bit of a mask off there, wasn't it? The fact that Jenk is aware of the fact that he doesn't agree on this one thing and he's 99% like okay on the rest of it, it is worse because as someone who should be educated on this issue and that someone that understands more than anyone else why this is important and why we shouldn't let the the Republican, the right wing and the conservatives win on this, it's worse. As someone that's educated and understands what's happening, for him to agree that trans women don't belong in sport, regard, you know, he's saying about young women is fine and stuff like that. At the end of the day, any form of agreement is agreement. I think that's worse. Okay. We're gonna lose because you're being so extreme. And then every ally you have, you're like, nope, nope. I'm going to be more pure than them. So I'm going to burn their bridge down. I don't want any allies. Okay, okay, well, then don't have any allies. Okay, if if both of our goals are aligned and we are interested in coalition building and actually fighting for justice, okay, there's two different things to do here. One is try to engage in purges and try to say, this purity spiral is self-defeating, which I agree with you on. 100%. Or the other thing is to just stay the course and just let people chirp into the void and never give them an ounce of pushback. Because why? Every single if if people are looking uh, for uh, plus, if come people are looking on, for get okay, out of here. no, that's not a get yeah, out of here. So situation. here I'll tell you this exactly what happens. Because no, I, this is really important because you know why. <laughs> so Haas, so every time we say any little thing, all the other streamers and stuff these. Uh, come in and go, oh, we're better than the Young Turks. We're better than the Young Turks. We agree with you 200%. They're such monsters. And they clutch their pearls and stuff, and etc. And then we go, okay, guys, we we're said a, but hold on. We said a tiny thing. You guys said this nuclear reaction. Okay, say another tiny thing and defend our position for like three minutes on air, right? And then another round of nukes, right? We're better than the Young Turks. We're the most pure. We're the most progressive. Radical, radical, radical. We have to be the most radical. And if you don't believe us, then you're a Nazi. Well, and then I made it an issue. Oh, I didn't want to completely dunk on him, but it's giving old stubborn man. I'm sorry, it really is. Like he's saying it's not a big issue, but then I had this massive reaction. Well, then it is a big issue, Jenk. Maybe it's not a big issue to you, but if half of the internet is blowing up over it, maybe come down from your high horse a little tiny bit and understand that it actually probably is quite important to a lot of people you fool it's giving boomer i'm not gonna lie fine he's a progressive he's doing good in the world of other things for sure but like i just said earlier a movement moves and you have to keep up with it and he is failing at the last hurdle and you know where is he on neo pronouns where is he on all of these things eventually you're gonna jump out the race like we saw with Dave Rubin, like the chat's saying the same thing with Anna Kasparian. Is she just leaving the race entirely? Is she kind of doing a right wing grift? Like Russell Brand, we talked about this on the stream last week. He had a very anti-establishment, progressive leftist viewpoint kind of spiel a long time ago until he eventually went to the right. You know, it's like, if you fail at this point, Jenk, and if you don't stand up for every single trans woman in sport, and you don't educate yourself to understand about hormonal changes and about all of these different things. And you don't fight the organizations in their entirety to say, look, trans women belong in sport, deal with it, they're women. If they win all of the records, then like that has, like, then they're, let's, let's have that discussion about how to change that in general. If you fall at this last hurdle and you say, actually, I agree on this one point, this 1%, then you can't claim to be this almighty progressive God that you think you are. Come down a little peg, my guy. I talked about it for about a total of maybe three minutes in all the Young Turks, okay? And then everyone else talked about it 
for 200 hours I know, and pretended that it was us. Okay, here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing that you're there's two different parts here. One, you've immediately uh, ascribed to uh, you know bad faith uh, yes. arguments to these people. You're like yes. saying they're cloud I definitely operated. Do. Okay, so one, that might not be the case. There might be genuine disagreements. That's number one. But at at which point you think well you know better than them right? Um, no, I'm. A, they could disagree. Okay, I okay. Don't give a shit listen, listen, listen. But like, okay. But okay. Even but if, if they, they are bad, me, faith, I'm going to call them Nazis. Okay, even if they are bad faith, right? Okay. Even if they're bad faith, then what the f are you doing? Giving them more clout? I don't. No, I don't say no, anything. And no. then they do 200 shows no, about it. Doesn't it, matter. And then pretend I'm the one saying it. It doesn't so matter. So I got. Hey, can we agree that all the other uh, like Lance or whatever the are. No. Oh, no, no. They should all shut the f up then. Okay. Right. Right. Because that's dude, what you're saying. Dude, Why are you making a big issue out of it? Because I only said it for one minute. They said it for 200 minutes. Why don't they shut the f up? Oh my God. I'm going to lose my mind. A little bit of a case of taking your own advice there, Jenk. Like it, again, we're getting a little bit of a mask off thing. He came for Lance from the Surf Times, which is also, he's like the nicest guy. Come on. It's a stubborn, it's a stubborn boomer. We're dealing with a stubborn boomer. He's a male Karen. Sad to see, really. It's sad to see someone this stubborn reacting this way. Poor Hassan looks shattered. <laughs> Hassan looks so tired of his rubbish. I don't under I don't even understand what we're disagreeing about. So we agree 99% on the issue and we agree I think the major 99% the, that it's yeah. not a major issue and people are making a okay. big deal out of it. I think I think the the anger that people feel towards that sort of thing inevitably derives from offering any light to that conversation especially when you understand that it is just like bullshit talking points that have been focus tested and being brought up. The moment that you give it any validity, okay, and now I'm not even talking about like let's talk about a general I, thing. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking. I'm not even talking about like you know talking to other leftist people or like defending your positions or whatever. I'm talking about how deeply and undesirably unproductive it is to offer any amount of consideration to literally talking points that are cooked up in a laboratory about. 0.1% of the f population. As they, as they do 200 shows back to back. There are a million streamers. And, are you and telling them? There are a million streamers that have not only said things about you, but have said things about me as well. There's a difference between uh, you and I, though, because no matter what happens, when people do write those uh, things or people do say those things about me, I've learned the hard way not to give it any credence whatsoever and stay the f course and ultimately if people have made up their minds that i am a transphobic person then that's yeah ggs there's nothing i can do about that again sorry i can't agree there i really can't agree there hassan actually you can educate yourself if if you get the big enough reaction that it warrants it obviously like i'm saying like a couple people maybe they're just trolling but what jenk is talking about here is the huge reaction he had self-admitted of a tiny issue but like i don't agree that you should just not really look into it, not trying to educate yourself, as I said earlier. But also, I wanted to just add a point here of like, if he doesn't want to go from, I don't agree trans women shouldn't be in sport, all the way to, I 100% agree. Let them smash all them records. 100%, oh my God, I'm an advocate for this. We don't even have to see that jump, okay? And I think the fact that he's not even budging a little bit is kind of a bit of a problem. Well, it's a lot of a problem. But we could, for example, have him say, look, I don't agree with trans women in sports that have that have a physical biological advantage. If that were to happen, if I were to find one. However, I understand as a progressive, um, you know, TYT host that's been in this for 21 years that trans men are also a topic that needs to be discussed in this that non-binary folk that also need to be taken into consideration that not all trans women are actually going to have a biological advantage and that's uh you know there's a different variation and that the biological advantage has been disproven by various medical studies and that the organizations and structures in place that have made this advantage happen should also be taken down anyway we don't need gendered sport and the fact that we can have heavyweight lightweight and different variants anyway in boxing so why don't we have that to incorporate the fact that transgender 
gender women all women all genders can actually compete with each other and the fact that patriarchally the reason that we have a gendered sport is because men don't like to lose with women which is what we've seen in chess i'm laboring the point here but it doesn't have to be all or nothing he doesn't have to go from one side of the extreme to the other he can however educate himself he can admit he doesn't know everything and he can get off his high horse and he can learn what is going on if people think that i'm bad on racial issues or if i'm a misogynistic person then there's nothing that i can change about their perspective they are un entirely too malleable which is why i have assumed positions on so many things that the american population considers radical whether it be foreign policy and what i believe in or whether it be trans issues even if it's something that americans across the board consider to be like unpopular the reason why I can stay the course in spite of that pushback is because I f***ing ignore it. Because I know that it is unproductive. That's it. Yeah. And, and the second thing I will say, and this is something that I try to talk to my audience about quite frequently, is that being a progressive is not about having black people or trans people hype you up all the f time. There are going to be plenty of moments where you are going to be at odds with activists there is going to be plenty of moments where you have disagreements with the marginalized communities that you claim to uh, speak on behalf of. Ultimately, it's not even about a logical conclusion to those problems. It's about being empathetic, right? That's at the heart okay. of the matter. So let's being see, empathetic. Let's do a super important distinction, okay? Because and and I don't think I've made a good enough case for this distinction, and I want to be way clear. There's a difference between randos in the world that care about this issue, whether they agree with me or disagree with me, or they heard the wrong thing about me, By the or, way, or they have heard the right thing and they still think this guy's a Republican and I hate him. No problem. And media figures, streamers, etc. Those guys are largely scorpions. And it's because the incentives and disincentives create scorpions. Because when you attack someone else, you get into the algorithm loop on YouTube, mainly YouTube, but in some other places as well, and you try to get attention. So they don't even know, I hope they don't know, a lot of them, that they're do, uh, doing it on purpose. I hope they're not doing it on purpose, but probably some of them are, right? But they think like, no, this is really important. I have to correct the record by attacking the Young Turks. Oh, look at that, my views went up. What a wonderful coincidence. I'm gonna do it again and again and again. And this is not just about radical left. Are you crazy? No way. The, the right wing started this. Why does Steven Crowder dress up as me? Yeah, right? I, I was about to say, listen. Right? Listen, but you're- So why did Jimmy Dore attack me like a n nut job? Why did Sargon of Akkad go back like 15 partially, years? Partially Why because- Why did Sam Harris? Why did all of them attack us? Partially because you, because you YouTube, respond. We're the largest. Partially because you respond. It's called getting farmed. Trust me, I know from personal experience what that's like. I, uh, you know, for a very long time, I got farmed like a okay? Because just like you, perhaps because I am also uh, as stubborn as you are, I couldn't shut the Anytime there was like any error, whenever someone said, this is what Hassan believes or whatever, I immediately rushed to correct the record, thinking that there was good faith discussion to be had. Now, out of the people that are actually criticizing you, there are people who I uh, uh, do like, who I do appreciate. I'm not going to get into that part of the conversation because I feel like that's going to uh, blow no, a lid in it. this. It's going to make you blow a gasket. But the reality is that if you want to have a productive and successful coalition, you just can't stress that out, okay? You, you yeah, can't. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with even it. If, even if Look, they I say- I was super clear. You like what we're saying? You come to the Young Truths. If you don't like it and you want super radical weirdos, there's like a million See, but, shows but for you. That's what you're doing. Like you're you're already, you're casting everyone else in a bad light. Don't even talk about it. Don't even bring it up. That's okay. it. Okay. And it's also very hypocritical for him to say that like, if you don't agree with him, you're a super radical weirdo. I really think that stubbornness is what people are really having a problem with. He can't have both. He can't say this is a tiny issue, this isn't important, it's just the 1%. But also, everyone has blown this up into huge proportion. Loads of people are making videos about this. Loads of people are talking about it. It's like, duh, you stupid idiot. Maybe it is a big issue. Why am I reacting to this? Why am I a 31 year old woman in Japan at nine o'clock in the morning on Japan reacting to this? Because there are no trans people here. There are no trans people present. There is no one to say, hold on, you're missing the mark on trans men or non-binary people or cis women. Like the, the racialized uh, people of color that have had too much testosterone to compete in sports. Where is that discussion, Jenk? 
when are you going to realize that this is much bigger than just trans women and that is one tiny element of the community this argument is huge and that's why you missed the mark and that's why you had half the internet turning away from you because you failed you failed to do what you claimed to do and that's a huge discussion that is a big issue i get so irate so i know i've been punched in the face 200 times when you, and i'm not allowed to punch back exactly 100 percent. that's what i'm saying yes yes you get it that is what i'm saying that's what being progressive is okay if someone on your side is punching you you ultimately turn around and say i don't give a it's fine because the real mother whose face I have to punch is out there that actually holds on to all levers of power. Because while we're arguing about the minutia of your perspective on trans issues, or whenever like uh, uh, you, you choose to engage in like any kind of reactionary framing of an issue, there are actual people out there who are making everyone's lives actively worse. So why the would I ever care about what some dumb youtuber has to say when ben shapiro is again stealing our punch money and doing whatever the fuck is necessary to keep propagandizing every awful position that makes people's lives worse i'm not gonna stray away from my my point of view but more importantly and i don't think you do either but there's this one issue that you and i have there's one disagreement there's one difference that you and i have you spend entirely too much time thinking about all the people on your side who hate you okay who who say you're bad and wrong even if it's a misunderstanding don't even f clear it up it doesn't matter people will see where you are genuinely coming from when you keep saying the same that you're saying that you've said for 20 years that's it okay a lot of people yelled at me during the hogwarts uh, drama uh, there were every trans content creator on twitter yelled at me okay and said you're a, a piece of you're transphobic. Oh, what? You can't play one fucking game that's transphobic? It was an idiotic fucking take from the jump. I said it a month in advance that this is entirely too popular of an IP. The best thing to do is not like try to do boycott. It's try to boycott this IP that's completely devoid of, of the transphobic person that is making money off of it. And instead, use it to, to fundraise or, or uh, uh, you know push the issue further. Everybody yelled at me, said that that was incredibly transphobic. What the fuck did I do? I shut the fuck up. I said, you guys are wrong, but it doesn't matter. History will absolve me. It did. Who gives a shit? The game fucking sucked. Right-wingers like Ben Shapiro made commentary on it, saying that Hassan is terrified of, of trans people in his own audience, and that's why he also has to capitulate to the trans people in his own audience, when if I wanted to capitulate, it would have never said uh, anything about Hogwarts whatsoever, and I would have just stayed the course and never played it and said, yes, it's a transphobic game. But I didn't do that because I'm a stubborn piece of shit. I yelled at the people and I moved on. Many of those people who thought I was transphobic in that fervor have come to the realization that they were maybe wrong. Okay, I mean, I, I wasn't there for that. I'm not going to go too hard into the, the Hogwarts stuff. It's all finished. But I think what he's missing is that by purchasing the game and promoting it and increasing the sales of it, he's putting money in JK Rowling's pocket and JK Rowling actively funds anti-trans organizations charities um baylor's place check out my video essay on that if you haven't watched it already she literally created an essay center that discriminated legally against trans women um like i don't think promoting the sales of that game is okay but maybe i'm missing the mark a lot of people don't want to admit that they're wrong especially when tensions are high it doesn't matter they finally quietly come to that conclusion that you were uh that you were on if they truly do believe that you are uh, uh genuinely on their side that's it so just make your work speak for itself you don't have to constantly f yell about random trans people online and yes that's what being the bigger progressive uh media person uh it, it revolves around you have to do that that's yeah. it all right look i'm gonna take your advice let's move on because it's a microscopic issue there you go so let's talk about uh, defund the police now jenk just really doesn't just doesn't strike me as someone that is willing to do the work and change their opinion um so I just do lose respect for that. I know that that's a bit harsh, but he should be held to quite a high standard because of the work he's doing and the education he claims to have on this issue. Hi, how are you? Are you enjoying Matriarchetype? Thank you, I'm so glad you found me. Well, anyway, if you wanna get more involved, we do have a Discord server, you can chat to the community. I'll be in there sometimes just chilling out. You get to like have a one-on-one -on -one with me if you so desire. 
Or you can of course become a YouTube member or a patron. And yes, this was secretly a patron plug from the beginning. Ha ha ha, I got you. But seriously, I am trying to uh, get a few more of the like the smallest paying patrons, like two pound a month. Um, it just helps me expand the channel. If you can, please do support in any way you feel comfortable. But otherwise, check out some of my other videos, watch them to the end, and you'll be doing your bit to help grow Matriarchetype and increase the positivity for the LGBTQIA plus and ally community. So anyway, have a good day, have a look around, and let me know if you need any help.